All right, and welcome back to episode 19 of uh, Three White Guys Try Not to Say the N-Word for an Hour. <laughs> <laughs> I am producer Tom. I'm Joe. I'm Mike. I'm, I'm working on something. Yeah, he's uh, he's opening our uh, our alcohol of choice, which is a bit of a switch up from our Take usual uh, style. You got um, it. Oh, shit. We're doing uh, Let me know when you're ready. Hallie oh. Red 19 Crimes Wine. Oh, shit. With Snoop Dogg on the Yes, cover. it is Snoop Dogg's right, official wine. Here, yeah. we're going to get the, uh, the sound effect from it. Oh, no, we're not. Oh, wait, wait. Dude, oh. we just and we're doing what did you do to this bottle? I didn't you do know anything. I, thank God Amanda's still here. She's our wine wait, expert. Wait, what? Okay, this needs to come off. You're supposed to take the... Even I know All that. Right. I don't drink wine. We're yes. trying to, we're trying to get the good well, sound Tom, effect so you of keep the pop. Uh, you keep doing your thing. I'm going to save what Mike did here. All right. And the album... Yeah, we're doing Doggy Style. <laughs> doggy Style from Two Dogs. Yes. 1993 <laughs> classic. I'm going home. <laughs> oh, my God. You're already home, Mike. <laughs> Um, yeah, so so once we uh, once we crack this bad boy open, we'll uh, do a bit of a different review. We've never Together. done a wine. No. We just stuck to beers, and we did a seltzers one. And ready? Yeah, oh, Mazel Tov, baby. <laughs> nice. Try. Mike, I'm gonna give you a a, a D for Ooh. Um, attempt. So shall we pour here? Yeah. There's a whole science behind. Pouring wine. <laughs> wine. Yeah, you gotta that sniff mine. it, you gotta stem it. You oh, pour it in, I, I, you yeah. swirl it, and uh-huh. then you smell it. Yeah, okay. it, 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 it uh, supplies an aroma. Matter? Yes, it's an aroma. So here, I just we get to put it back down because someone said it was good. Oh my god, it's Walter's grape juice. <laughs> Uh, actually, that's a good pour there, Tom. That's all I want. Is, <laughs> that's all you want? That yeah. is a that is a serving, right? Oh no, no, no. I'm to go about a half inch up. <laughs> I had a sip. Why would you? Did you take it from the bottle? Yeah. Now we're here. Do you have the Rona? That's like Snoop. I don't don't have the Rona. Me too. Me too. Oh, God. Mm. All right. Well, for those out there, I hate wine. This is Joe speaking. I hate wine. But I don't really know you do what you got to do for the podcast. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, these are also really big wine glasses too. Yeah, I'm gonna do a full serve and do that because I gotta drive home. Okay. All right. All right. Stem it. So we gotta. Yes, yeah, so we gotta be some swirl it. Yeah, we gotta swirl, swirl it. it. Mm. We can. You can cheers first. Okay. Smell it. Oh, this reminds me of Grandma's house. <laughs> <laughs> Mom, it is balls very and pleasant. On the couch. Cheers. <laughs> All right. Uh, to Gloria. Oh, Mama. Oh, that's good. All right, guys, what do you guys say? You know what? <laughs> it's really good. Not that bad. No. Goes down. Woo! And then Joe's Oh, choking. Joe's making a face. <laughs> Great. I don't like it. It's actually not bad. All right. All right. Good. So let's, uh, so let me give a bit of a background oh, to, to the 19 Crimes uh, <sighs> label. Veggie fries. Um, <laughs> <laughs> don't crunch on camera. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> on the back it says. <laughs> Send away the crunch. <laughs> It says, 19 Crimes tells the true story of rule breakers who beat the odds, overcame adversity, and went on to become folk heroes in their society. This spirit lives on today through innovators and cultural creators like Callie's own Snoop Dogg. A leader in contemporary pop culture, Snoop embodies the timeless values of the 19 Crime rogues who came before him. And some other stuff about their website, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's, it's red wine from California, 14.1%. It is. Yes. Which is high for wine. Yes, yeah, we're getting fucked up. Mind. Makes sense. Yes, I know. Guy who had to wash it down with veggie sticks. Yeah, I, I so, can't. Uh, this is not. <clears throat> I'm just gonna throw a whole, So Calvin Broadus Jr., mm, AKA, AKA Snoop Dizzle. The O double G. Originally known as Snoop Doggy Dog, actually. His yeah. name is Calvin. Yeah, his name's Calvin. <laughs> Calvin. What? <laughs> yep. Uh, let's see. So he released this wine. This was maybe like a year or so ago. Um, in partnership with 19 Crimes, it is a Snoop Cali Red, you know, giving that uh, nice dark purple color for a red wine, um, <laughs> which you'd think would be red. Um, <laughs> um, they're, they're based out of uh, Australia, 19 Crimes. Oh, okay. Okay. Ooh, yeah, Australian yeah. wine company. Uh, their first California wine release. Hmm. Yep. Uh, let's see. It is 65% Petite Syrah. Syrah. <laughs> yep. 30% Zinfandel and 5% Merlot. Mm. Um, Quite. It retails for $12 a bottle. <laughs> it does? <laughs> That's it. 12 bucks. That was pretty good. Pinky's um, out. Let's see. Mm. Um, and let's see. As a review, it was uh, Snoop Cali Red was a brilliant and dark purple in color with notes Accurate. of toasted oak. Mm. Accurate. Uh Candied cherries, blackberries, and a slight afterthought of licorice. 
Mm. Uh, features, it also features a light, slight linger of heat on the palate. Heat. Like hot? I, heat. Like temperature? <laughs> heat. Yeet? <laughs> Yeet? Why? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, I we also... We also will post at some point, but we downloaded the app. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's do that now. Yeah, talk about that. 19 Crimes so has So 19 Crimes has, like, interactive bottles. You download this app, you scan the label, and it, like, talks to you. So we did that here. Let's get a little example here. Yeah, so it's like a, uh, it's like a holographic uh, Snoop Dogg thing where yep. you scan it, and he's supposed to, like, talk on the bottle. So like it, it, his face is like almost animated. Yeah, it's it cool. is pretty awesome. It's very Are you gonna take a video of this, I Mike? Am, I am for for footage. Video. Yes. On on the gram. Okay, so you scan it right here. Scanned. I believed in myself when the world tried to train a dog not to. Gotta thank myself for that. I already did, but I'm gonna do it again. So you're yeah. supposed to do multiple lines, mm -hmm. right? So if you do it yeah, again, so if you do it again scan it. they call me the dog father, king of the West Coast. And I was born at Defy Society. All right. Thanks. Thanks All for right. the wine. <laughs> thanks, dog. <laughs> that's pretty, I mean, that's that's pretty interesting that they have that. The I mean, graphic is awesome. Like, it's yeah. not like it lines right up with the bottle. Like, no, it, they pretty sweet how they that. made that. I definitely say for anyone who likes red wine, red blends, any type of red, nineteen crimes is incredible wine. Yeah. They do a really good job. You like a lot of their wine. Wines they are my day. yeah. They're my favorite. What do you have a quick rating on this? The Cali Red, from all the other 19 crimes I've had, and just, I do love my wine. I'd give it, am I still doing out of five? Yeah. All right, I'd give it like a 4.5. It's a really Ooh. good wine. Wow. I, like, from a wine lover, I definitely suggest to try it. Okay. Cool. To keep that in mind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank very you. Very good. So, my I question. I don't taste. Oh, no, no, go ahead. I don't taste the licorice, though. So, it does say licorice. Yeah, I, I hate licorice. I don't taste it at all. And I don't get that heat yet. So, um, if you're expecting that, I, I definitely don't get it at the first uh, couple sips. So my question is, you said it's it's all about like uh, when it comes to the 19th, people who have like come overcome adversity and everything else. So what's the point of the Walking Dead version? <laughs> <laughs> they overcame <laughs> not being a zombie. <laughs> no, but they all are a zombie on it. So oh. <laughs> they there's did. a Walking Dead 19 crash. I, I believe so. Is it called the Warden? There's a couple special ones that 19 Crimes has come out with, and I there's so this one's a Cali Red, obviously a Snoop Dog, but um they have another one called the Warden, which recently not recently came out, maybe a couple years ago, and I'm trying to figure out if that could be the Walking Dead one. I'm not sure, but 19 Crimes in general usually has when you pop the cork, it gives you a number. It's one to 19 of crimes, like you can collect them, but every cork tells a story, and then like Joe mentioned, when you scan the label, it tells you the story. Oh. Cool. On the app, but so it's a cool like little collectible item too. I'm definitely missing number 19. It's driving me crazy. But really? yep. whoever's got the number 19, send it our way. Yeah, yep. please give it to me. DM it to us. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Like he's on the court. That's pretty sweet. Yeah. Oh, so we should. Yeah. Like oh, yeah. Um, Snoop's doesn't have an actual number. It has some, his beautiful face. I feel like they should have uh, been more clever with the the name of this. Like could have could have incorporated <laughs> something with gin and juice. Like yeah. the title of this, Sip on I, Red and Use. I think they went with uh, Cali Red because it's their first California like okay. release mm. wine. And he's yeah. from West Coast and he's the whole idea of he's a West Coast rapper. Mm -hmm. And back yeah. in the nineties it was the West Coast versus the East Coast and mm -hmm. it was this big feud and so And California is known for their pretty good wines, right? Yeah. Napa. Yeah. And then this is mm -hmm. obviously, you know, a red wine, so Yep. Yeah. I, I would assume that's kind of where they went with it. Um, but yeah, I mean, we are not uh, wine snobs. We are not wine connoisseurs. No, so, <laughs> it's a bit out of, uh, out yeah. of our comfort zone. That's why um, which I appreciate. it's help, helpful that Amanda is still here. Still here. We, yes. It's like we slept over like a week. You know, we, it happens. We, all week. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm She's just here, here because you guys said the word 19 crimes, and <laughs> I decided that I wanted to be a part of it. Gotcha. Oh, Noted. <laughs> yeah. So the game. I do have to say, I keep sipping on this and. It's becoming more tolerable. Okay. Which is you know you know me, Amanda. Joe does not drink wine. I hate everybody. Wine. In case yeah. you're wondering. Cool. He'll sip it and he gets his face. Yeah. I, I'm afraid of like red teeth. It is very red interesting teeth. though, I gotta say, over uh, you know, but it's all based off of like as they say, infamous people. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, and they're all real? Done crimes. Yeah, they're real crimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. 
What a cool concept. Oh, it's a very creative. Yeah. I mean, and the fact that the wine is so good, that yeah. helps them out. And it's sure. cheap. Yeah. And, right. Oh, yeah, and it's affordable. <laughs> it's affordable. So their bottles range anywhere from like nine ninety nine to 12 bucks. Mm-hmm. I don't think I've seen any bottle more than that. That, it, that That's such a great buy. And mm-hmm. like, that's hard to come by because usually companies, whatever product you make, you either go all in on like the concept or all in on the quality. Mm-hmm. This goes all in on everything. The concept is cool with the scanning labels on all the bottles, the theme, all the crimes. The wine is actually good, and it's affordable price. Mm-hmm. So it's like, how could you not? Yeah. yeah. It's more in depth than like barefoot, where it's just like a fucking foot on the cover. Yeah, right? yeah seriously. Yeah. So 19 crimes turned convicts into colonists. Upon conviction, British rogues guilty of at least one of the 19 crimes were sentenced to live in Australia rather than death. Mm-hmm. So all the convicts mm-hmm. were sent to Australia, and they had mm-hmm. to live there. Um, this punishment by transportation began in 1787, and many of the lawless died at sea. For the rough-hewn prisoners who made it to shore, uh, a new world awaited. As prisoners in the frontier, I actually learned about this in high school. Um, as the prisoners, <laughs> just not coming back to you. It really <laughs> did. This wine celebrates the rules they broke and the culture they built. And then it's got a list on their website of all the 19 crimes that they could have broke to be sent to Australia. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. That I did not know. What a cool... One of them is stealing roots, trees, or plants and destroying them. That makes... Yeah, I've seen some interesting things on the cork that I'm like, wow, that's a crime. But I'm like, okay. Assault with an intent to rob. Mm -hmm. So that actually robbed me. Hey, cool concept, though. Awesome. Yeah, I got to get yeah, no, credit definitely. here. Definitely. Really yeah. cool concept. I'm glad we uh, we did this. I'm glad you guys are too. I got free wine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we take the rest. We, uh, shall we uh, transition to the album now? We shall. Yeah. All right. All Amanda, right. thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. Of course. Figured okay. I'd give a hand with the wine. You guys did all right. Oh, my God. Enjoy the album. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, Snoop Dogg, 1993. Uh, this is his first album, right? First album mm-hmm. and labeled... Uh, as one of the most influential, if not mm-hmm. one of the best Snoop, uh, Snoop rap albums. Oh, yeah. Period. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> yep. Especially for the time, you yep. know. Um, and I hear a lot of the influences that he kind of inadvertently given to a lot mm-hmm. of modern artists. Mm-hmm. Um, I know, uh, especially Kendrick Lamar, who is kind of has that West Coast sound. Um, I, I had listened to, I was a big fan of Kendrick before this album. And okay. then kind of going back and hearing mm-hmm. this, it's very cool to hear, like, all the tiny things he adds. Like, in one of the songs he has um, someone saying, Steady Loan, Steady Roans, which is how Jenna Juice starts. Mm-hmm. Or he says it in there. Um, he says, like, I'll put that on my mama and my baby boo too, which is in, um, I think it's said Murder is the Case, if I could mm-hmm. be wrong. Um, but anyway, uh, my personal experience with this, um, I didn't really get into rap music at all until, like, late middle school, like, that kind of mm-hmm. era of my life. I remember saying, like, kind of similar to country music, or, like, I would just, like, shit on it for no reason. I would just be like, oh, they're just people talking. Like, that's not even music. Yeah. But I was just being dumb. And, um... <laughs> yeah. So I was introduced to this, like, Lil Wayne, some, like, Drake shit. But this, um, the first song I was introduced to was Who Am I, What's My Name? Yeah, oh, yeah. Shout out to Jordan Betts, the homie. Um, I, I think this album's a classic. I think there's a lot of really good songs on it. Yeah. Um, it, it, it he kind of draws a lot from his contemporaries. He kind of has that kind of, like... Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, I mean, Tupac sound, but obviously like Dr. Dre. Yeah, he, he name yeah. drops Dr. Dre like I mean, every he, song pretty much. Essentially samples Biggie. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and just um, takes uh, uh, Lodi Shiz- Doty. Was it Shiznit or was it Lodi Doty? I think it was Lodi Doty. I'll double check on that. Um, yeah, where he he basically just steals hypnotize mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then just uses it at the end. Well, he also samples a lot of P Funk too, right? Because that's the the, the G whole funk. the genre. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah for sure. Yeah, because he calls himself I, a G. I I love that. In the um, the G Funk intro song, where mm-hmm. he says like he basically introduces the the subgenre of hip hop. Into the G Funk. Yeah, I love that. I think that. That was that was a really cool yeah definitely um, little ear candy there. Mm-hmm. Um, but the track Bathtub, I don't know. A lot of rap albums have these like spoken word kind of mm-hmm. like things. I. I don't know. Uh, it, it felt like an intro to the intro. Yes. Which G-Funk was, I think, the actual intro. Yes. Um, and I feel like a lot of albums, especially around this time period, had a lot of skits in them. Yes. And yes. this thing is loaded with skits. Some, loaded. Some yes. really good, some really bad. <laughs> some really fun, fun yeah. ones. Yeah. Um, so, Bathtub is an opener. 
not necessarily one I'm going to be listening to every time I no. turn the album on. For me, for me, the album starts with G Funk intro. Like, it's yeah. such a good introduction. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting because really the first song is Gin and Juice. Like, that's mm-hmm. like the first song on the album. Yeah, mm-hmm. which was uh, the second single, but probably one of his most yeah. known songs. Yeah, I mean, it's oh, yeah. an interesting way to start. Yeah, I mean, that's just a classic mm-hmm. song right there. I'm not as big of a fan as Gin and Juice as you guys are. Well, No, it's a good song. It's a good song. I'm sure. just saying it has, like, the cultural kind of yeah. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna... power. I mean, by no means, I, I'll be honest, I didn't even mark it as favorite sleeper or none of that. Like, Me neither. Yeah, no, I didn't. Um, but it is a good song. Yeah, a lot of a lot of like cover bands cover it, yeah. you know, because um, it just it kind of has that reach. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't really like the, the synth, that, that, like, one note. That kind oh, yeah. of holds for the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That also that's another thing that kind of irks me with a lot of the songs on this is that that high pitched synth that's on like the chorus or the verse. Yeah, yeah. It's it just pretty it, much everything. Yeah. It it gets a little bit too much after a long mm-hmm. period yeah. of time. But I guess that was the production at the time. You know, th- those were the samples like at yeah, the fingertips. Yeah. That was the common you know mm-hmm. commonalities. That's what was popular. Yeah, I'm going to give this album a, a fair bit of slack just due to the time that it yeah. came out. 1993, there's not a lot of rap albums mm-hmm. that even sound no. similar to this. No. So this kind of influenced a lot more people. Well, I mean, if you even read up on it a little bit, they talk about like that, that um, the birth of that G-funk. Mm-hmm. Um, and they say that it really started with The Chronic by Dre in 92. That's a great album. I mean, we're talking a year before Snoop puts this album out. With Dre as his primary producer, yep. so you're saying he's the second guy to put out an album like this. So mm-hmm. again, it's not like it's been years and years of this happening. Right, and exactly. All Snoop comes like he's at the forefront. Right, we're looking at the beginning right here. Exactly. Yeah, definitely. So yeah. you know you have to look at it with that kind of grain of salt. That if, For you know, sure. That idea yeah, that he really was a pioneer in this style of yeah. West Coast G-Funk rap. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Another thing that I kind of give it a bit more slack for is um, I feel like lyrically it gets a little repetitive mm-hmm. over time. Yeah, I mean it, the it themes does. are yeah, kind of similar, very similar. Kind of similar to what we talked about in the last episode. Mm-hmm. Um, there's, there's really a lot of overlap in the yeah. lyrics. You know, he's talking yeah. about smoking weed and fucking bitches yeah. and yeah, you know yeah. baby mama this. and all that yeah yep. and that was one of my knocks on the album is mm. the repetitiveness and you know we talked about that last episode too mm-hmm. <clears throat> although there uh which song is it he actually talks about all his homies and rubbers so he is actually uh ain't no know, fun yeah he, he's mm-hmm. actually very conscious of uh safe sex yes which mm-hmm. i you know i appreciate thank you yeah. mr dog yep <laughs> <laughs> for not raw dogging <laughs> <laughs> That's that's another thing I wanted to mention. Um, Nasty dog. Oh, no. on the G Funk intro, there's a lot of dude. Wait, I'm sorry, Pop. Okay, yeah. I don't want to cut off. I love how much biatch is used on this album. I crack up every time it said biatch. I love it. Biatch. Go ahead, Tom. Go ahead. Um, yeah, on G Funk intro, I appreciate all of the uh, the lyrics that kind of tie in the themes of like mm-hmm. him being a dog and like, oh, you know, he's got to give her the bone and you take a doggy bag home. Yep. Yeah. And like all, all this kind of relations to his name and yep. how that how, like, connects. I thought that was really cool to uh, yeah. kind of have as a bit of a, uh, a, a, a thematic somewhat kind of connection. I, I love the line. It says, get your pooper scooper because... Blank, I can't say the word. It's talking <laughs> shit. I love that. I thought I it was, thought just, it was I thought it was super interesting that you essentially don't hear Snoop Dogg until the third song on the album. Yes. I mean he really the first two songs between the skit and a little bit of music, there's a chick on there, there's him. Oh, yeah. And then all of a sudden Snoop Dogg on Gin and Juice comes in and yeah. I'm like I've well, been think, listening for five minutes and I still haven't heard Snoop. If I'm not mistaken, it's popular at like hip yeah. and or hip rap and hip-hop concerts that there's these hype people out yeah. before they, the artist themselves mm-hmm. actually comes out. Yep. So this kind of sounds like that in album form. Mm-hmm. Um, then we got The Shiznit. Um, <laughs> I thought I thought this was funny. Like I loved the, it. Mm-hmm. The radio... Um, yeah. Yeah, a little radio intro. Yeah. There's a lot of ball talk on this album. Yeah. There's a lot of references in the, the lyrics testicles. back to Nuts. Yeah. And like yep. the, the weird, uh, I liked it, but it was like yeah. the station was called W Balls. Yeah. yeah. His so name w was Saul. Balls. W Balls. 
nonsense. They, the guy was salty nuts. Yes. Yep. Salty yep, he nuts. He was. PJ, <laughs> And then there's one later where he's also on a radio station where the guy's called Easy Dick. Yeah. Yep. I like the jazz flute that kind of Yes. Hits. That yes. actually was my favorite part of that song. I, yep. I made that one of my favorite songs on the album. Mm-hmm. Because oh, yeah. What in the hell? Who expects Snoop Dogg to come out with Yaz Yaz flute? flute. <laughs> Soft J. Yeah, Soft J. But, yeah, it was, I mean, it was good. I like that song. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, then on to uh, Lodi Dodi. Yep. Or Lot Lottie Dotty. I don't know. I'm going with Low. Yeah, Lodi. probably Low. Lodi. Um, I, Lodi. Actually, Lodi. Lodi. Yeah. I, I think it's like A-W. Lodi Dodi. Lodi. Yeah, I was not a big fan of this one. Yeah, um, it was okay. It was, I, a, it was a bit long. Not the longest, but it was definitely up there in um, terms of track lists. Um the beat isn't really that good enough to be super repetitive. Mm-hmm. And granted, a lot song, of yeah, yeah, a lot of uh, the production choices kind of do that, where mm-hmm. they repeat a part of the beat and then just loop it for the whole thing. But it didn't have the substance to mm-hmm. stand up to that. Um, it had a. It, I like the lyrical content. It, it kind of told a story, and it was a bit more thematic. Um, didn't really have a lot of those, you know, styles that they're mm-hmm. usually going with. Um, the overlapping conversation in the beginning, kind of like at a party, was just jarring yeah. for me. Um, and I just, I usually would skip it if I was listening to the whole thing. Yeah. But, um, yeah. It, I mean, for, for well, at the time, it's fine. Mm-hmm. be honest with you, my favorite part of that song was the fact that he kind of uh, sampled and went with, like, the, the biggie, the hypnotize and yeah. all that. Um, and I, I thought it was just kind of cool. Like, it was almost like paying homage to him in a way, even though technically like the whole West Coast, East Coast was like a big issue, but yet here we have West Coast, you know, sampling and actually like almost paying homage, like I said, to to that East Coast style rap. Yeah. Um, and the way he introduced it into that song, I thought actually worked out mm-hmm. really well. So that was the only thing that really kind of set that song aside for me was I was like, oh, cool. You know, he's singing to that rhythm that we already know. Mm-hmm. And then, but he's adding kind of his own twist on the lyrics and fitting it into his own song. So I was definitely, uh, I definitely like that part of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, the next two songs, though, very cool. Murder was the case. Yep. And mm-hmm. serial killer. Um, I believe, if I read correctly, and I wish I watched it before recording this, but I think they made a music video for the both of these songs together, and it was kind of like an oh. epic, kind of like a thriller, kind of extended. Almost like mini movie. Okay. And I thought these were, you know, obviously two good songs for that because they're they're uh, content. But uh, yeah, no, the, the right in the heart of the album here, this is good good stuff right here. Yeah, um, I really enjoyed Murder Was the Case. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a bit darker in terms of uh-huh. style and substance. Um, it was a bit more uh, refined track that kind of brought out the darker elements. Um, in um, the darker elements of like being famous too, like you're gonna have people that want to kill you. Yeah. So yep. that that was really interesting. The high pitched synth was a little bit less in the forefront than most tracks. It was good. Yeah, it was good stuff. I mean, not bad songs. I mean, they all again, they do all sound somewhat similar after a while. Yeah. Um, but it was interesting. The six million ways to die, and then he comes mm-hmm. in with the with mm-hmm. his with his raps and leads right into Who Am I. Oh, you what's my name? What about serial killer? <laughs> right? Yeah, you didn't mention serial killer. Oh, well, I, we were oh you mentioned them both together. Them. We were talking about those together. They're were we separate not? tracks, Michael. They were separate tracks, but they were one music video. That is well, right. But are we? Well, are, right. we <laughs> well, we are we hops in music videos? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. We're not even hops this episode. We got <laughs> sure. vines, uh, wine and music videos. <laughs> Great uh, some music videos. Yeah, right. <laughs> vines. Um, oh man. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, if we go to the the probably the most renowned track yeah. on the album who you know who am i what's my right. name i would say probably jim and juice would be more refined than that yeah but yeah, yeah. i don't, know. I don't this, know this was probably the first snoop song i heard me too oh yeah definitely. Definitely. Snoop yeah. Song. Mm-hmm. yeah tom you're probably right i don't i don't know if who am i has the staying power as gin and juice but this was the first single um on the first album you know oh, obviously it's okay. about him i'm actually kind of surprised this song was this late in the album because oh. it's almost like an introduction to him you know, mm-hmm. no, agree. I'm, I'm surprised this wasn't like, and it was the first single. That's like, what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm surprised this didn't second. 
Mm-hmm. Doggy Dog World was third. I'm surprised they didn't like shorten the G Funk intro and then went into this because if you notice, like the 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 bass line, it is the pretty much the same bass line as it is in G Funk. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I noticed that. So well, if they kind of blended those two songs together and have this be the beginning of the album, mm-hmm. it would have made a little more sense to me. And if you look at the writers for Who Am I, What's My Name, uh, George mm-hmm. Clinton is actually one of the writers. I absolutely okay. believe it. So, uh, you know, the infamous, famous George Clinton. Well, that's probably because yeah. they needed to give him credit because wasn't this sampled? Isn't this a sample of a mm-hmm. Parliament song? Oh, it might be. I it's didn't got to be. That far, yeah. Maybe. Yeah. I'll, uh, um, I'll research that while we So I probably had to give him credit. Well, if that's the case, then I was going to say something about how he has really good, like, um, baseline choices on this. Yeah. But well, if that's true, then it's not really his Well, I, I think that's why he calls his G-Funk is because yeah. they they bring in, they, they sample so, P-Funk riffs, yeah. but then make it into rap. The whole idea behind the gangster funk is that they're basically using the slow hypnotic grooves, the deep bass, but they're specifically sampling P-Funk mm-hmm. and using that on their albums. Right. So, so I bet have, that's why George Clinton exactly. is getting credit on that song. George Clinton's bass lines on a... Snoop Dogg album, and that gives the combination of the funk and the gangster, and you have the G funk. Yeah. Um, and they say that Dr. Dre was the first one to kind of do that on Chronic, um, and kind of start to build that style of. They, they talk about some of the the uh, artists in the '80s that do it. Yeah. But um, this is more when it became a little more prevalent, and then um, you know Snoop Dogg. Really, kind of Andre's label yeah. blew it up even more. Mm-hmm. Um, but I will double check on the whole "What's My Name" mm-hmm. George Clinton combination. Yeah, no, I I love this track. Oh yeah. Um, like I mentioned in the beginning, it's like the first, like one of the first handful of rap songs I was ever introduced to in general, and it's definitely a good start. Um, the really good dance beat. Um, I feel like he switches up his flow a lot more. Because mm-hmm. I, I remember on one of the tracks, he mentions how people are like stealing his flow. Mm-hmm. So it was interesting to see how he kind of switches it up a little bit more. He yeah. says like, follow me, follow me, follow me, follow me. I, I love his rapping style on, on the entire song. Yeah. It's so it's so like iconic. Yeah. It's so unique to him. Yeah, his rapping style in general is just very... Yeah. It's, mm-hmm. it's like listening... You know, you give your example of, like, we grew up more with Eminem, and he has his style of rap. Then you listen to, like, a Snoop Dogg, and it's, you know, again, it's just very specific. Laid back. Yeah, it's very... Laid back. It's almost lazy. But it's not... not, It's not aggressive. It's It's, uh, stoned out of your mind, is what I would call it. Yeah. So, to go back, um, so the bass line that they sampled was off of the 1982 release of uh, Atomic Dog. So that was from George Clinton's album in 82, Computer Games. Huh. Yeah. So I don't think it's a P-Funk song. It's specifically a George Clinton song. But it's in that similar uh, but style. But it's, again, George Clinton's P-Funk reached everything commercial. They were just, P-Funk's great. Yeah. You should do a P-Funk album at some point. I'd love to. I, mean, I think but, we um, talked about that. We did. Right? Um, but yeah, so they sampled that song. Yeah, no, that track is definitely in like the the hip hop track Hall of Fame for oh. me. Mm-hmm. Oh god, absolutely. Well yeah. said. Absolute classic. Yep, for sure. True bang in in the every sense. Um, Mike, do you want to read the title of this next track though? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> for all my <coughs> and my bitches. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. You you read that beautifully, Tom. Thank you. Well done. Did you cough there? Sorry. In my in my notes, I I I said for all my N's and my B's. (laughs) Yeah. Um. Um, Go ahead. This track. Um. I I really enjoyed this track. It was like a grimy like gang vocal track. It kind of reminded me of like a Wu Tang or something similar to that. Um. At at points though, it did sound like kids that just learned how to swear for the first time. Like corrupt (laughs) swears a lot on this. (laughs) Yeah, so but yeah, good track for me. I enjoyed it. Yeah, it got it's got a lot of energy. You know, it just kind of goes. There's no real down point in it. It just keeps going and going and going, and mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. keeps everything off like an energizer mm-hmm. bed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for real. Yeah, I hated this song. I thought really? it was absolute trash. 
Because the chorus, they just keep saying it over and over and over and over again. Yeah. Like, we get it, you know. It, but I can see maybe in a live concert, like, that's the hype-up song. Yeah. Everyone in the crowd flipping their fingers, put your hands up in the air. I get that. But I don't need to listen to that on an album. You know, cut it down. It's four and a half I, minutes or yeah, whatever. Exactly. So well, you, you don't need four and a half minutes of saying that. A little over four and a half. Yeah. So I hate, I hate this song. I, it's, <laughs> yeah. a, it's a wow. skip from Wow, it. okay. I, I, I don't like it. I don't like it. Not, no repre- no uh, respect to the dog pound. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, not not the Shining. not a shining star in the album for me. Okay. Solid. Yeah. Hmm. Um, <laughs> I think my biggest. <laughs> I'm listening to the next song. I'm thinking my the biggest downfall overall on the album is that like every song has some sort of intro. Yeah, like, that's my killer. Like there's no flow from song to song to song. It's song to intro to song to intro to song to intro. Yeah, that that kills it a little bit for me. Like you get a guy like Eminem, and again, we grew up with Eminem more so than we. I mean, I was four years old when this album came out. My parents weren't quite ready to let me listen to it. So. <laughs> <laughs> You're still forming memories. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but you listen to Eminem, and he's got his skits kind of strategically placed here and there, here and there. And they're like accents to the album. And this, again, for the time, made sense. But it, every song opens up with some sort of skit, talking, vocal, for the most part. Yeah. And it becomes a little bit of a flow killer after a while. Yeah. Like, you go to listen, and you're like... And another skit. And then the song starts. Like, oh, this is a good song. And a skit. And then, oh, this is a good song. And yeah. a skit. And it just yeah. becomes a little too much after a while. I get it. I, but I, I, I understand it. what you're saying, yeah. It, it does kind of slow down the album a bit. Yeah. Um, even on the track after this, uh, Ain't No Fun, it has another, uh, like, radio introduction. Mm-hmm. But I, yep. I love this track. This is a great yeah, song. Yeah, it's a good song. Slow, sexy R&B uh, yep. yeah. track. Oh yeah. Um, Got the classic Nate Dogg and Warren yeah. G on it. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> hey, you ladies. That's a great track. Great, yeah, that's a great song. A uh, bunch of sex talk, but the it's it's like um there's a lot of like talk about you know sex with bitches on the album if I can say that word. Um, <laughs> sex or bitches? Either. <laughs> <laughs> but um, this is the first track that's focused on it mm-hmm. and really kind of goes in deeper and. Um, you know, it can get a bit vulgar at times, you know. Yeah. But, you know, fantastic yeah. features, great really does, smooth yeah. R&B track. Definitely uh, up there for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I'm like listening to it. It's you just, did. it's a funny song. It's fun. Yeah. It, it's I, a more I like it. it. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It does get vulgar, though. There's some, eh. it's, it's not for the faint-hearted. Yeah, I'm not going to show this to not. No. <laughs> I ain't showing this to Gloria. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and then uh, yeah, what do we have next? Doggy, Doggy dog, dog world, world. Mm-hmm. third it's, single. Yeah, really. Yeah, another lengthy intro. Yeah, and and, and that's where I, I get lost on the album. Like mm-hmm. I, I get it, but and the song itself is okay. It's not one of my favorites. Yeah. Yeah. The last like handful of tracks aren't really. It has that same great. bass line yeah. again. Yeah, they were really pushing that funk bass line. And then, you know, but they didn't definitely didn't change it up too much. Mm-hmm. Right. Time. Oh. We're both just listening to the track. <laughs> yeah. Like, while it's on, it's not that bad. But no, in retrospect, not it's it's not a standout. No, mm-hmm. not at all. Mm-hmm. There's, you, a lot, there's a lot more features than I previously oh, realized. Yeah. It's all over the place, which is another issue I have on the album. Like... Well, I'll get into I that. feel like that was a little bit more though. Like, again, we keep talking about '93 and the times and the you know that was a big thing back then. Like all the songs, like yeah, mm-hmm. you listen to if you put on a, a station on one of your whether it's Spotify, Amazon, Apple Music, and you put on a Snoop Dogg or a Dre or a, an M, even an Eminem, and you listen, ninety percent of those songs have a feature. It's not just one rapper doing it the whole time. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know if that is because. You know, they don't do the solo, like a guitar solo versus like when you listen to a rock song, you know, you have those change up with a breakdown and a guitar solo and all that. And here you have your verses and your choruses and your raps and kind of that guitar solo is a feature. Is you know it, what I mean? Uh, it a, is another a artist. A line, a rap, yeah. You know, um, 
again, that's just me kind of looking at it from a different lens of wondering, is that why they have so many features? Yeah. Um, no, it's a good view. I just feel like it was overdone. Like every sing, almost every single song has Pretty much. The a Shiznit feature. doesn't have a feature written on it. What's My Name doesn't have a, technically a feature on it. Um, Jesus, Jesus. Hustlers. Yeah, that's but pretty you, much it. You know what? Maybe it... Maybe Jeez and Hustlers has a feature. Really? Nancy Fletcher. Oh, oh yeah, Saber right. Lady um, yeah. May, you know, maybe it was necessary because he was. This was his first album, and he was only known from his appearance on the Chronic. And yeah. So maybe they needed that a to push. like that kind of to fill out, you know, the sound or have some familiar names to kind of help it out. But like, I think of him now, and I'm like, he doesn't need a lot of features like no. that, you know? Yeah. So I think yeah, he's still trying to uh, get his name out there. Right. Mm -hmm. So he's taking people like Warren G, Nate Dog, Corrupt, mm -hmm. Daz, yep. name dropping Dr. Dre on every track. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's like, Remember me? I was on that good album. Yeah. yeah. I'm surprised he didn't he do any he didn't like rap or anything on the album. He just produced. I think he might have dropped like one or two like ad lib lines. Yeah, did he? Okay. Maybe. I'm not entirely sure, but Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, this anyway, song. Yeah, G's, you know, and, G's and Hustlers. Doggy Dog World. Just oh, kind of, eh. okay. but that's where we are right now, right? Yeah. yeah. It was kind of. Eh. Yeah. This is what it is. Yeah. Nothing too not, crazy. not a big standout. Didn't really, I didn't stand really out. remember it that much. No. I, I did enjoy G's and Hustlers, though. Oh, yeah. I love yeah. this song. Good song. Yeah. The, the beat is so good. Yeah. I will say another lengthy intro, okay. kind of talking to like, the kids, like, oh, what do you want to be when you grow up? Oh, I want to do this. Yeah. Kind of neat, but like, you know. After you've heard it, you drags don't on. need to hear it again. Dun, dun, drags on. Dun. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> um, but wait, this was the one where he was a kid in school, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I thought that was a funny. <laughs> yeah, Yay. I like the little like baby music yeah. after that. Yeah. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah. yeah, that was that was kind of neat. Yeah, big fan of this song. It was a fun song. Definitely, definitely yeah. go back to this for sure. He was pretty animated on yep. the on the performance too, mm -hmm. which I appreciate. Yep. And then now we end it with uh, Pump Pump. With a little Malik. Yep. Eh. <laughs> right. It could it could have been a better like wrap up to the whole album as a whole. Mm -hmm. Um but I don't, know, I don't have a lot when, to say about it. Not, when, not one of my favorites. Yeah. When I listen to the album, I try not to look at the tr like what track I'm on. I'm just trying to yeah. get it all in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well no, I I just didn't expect that to be the ending song. Like Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. So I was like, oh, okay, the album's over. So it just seemed out of place to me. You know, it was just an okay song for me. Yeah, it, it was pretty abrupt to the rest of the album. Yeah. And again, another lengthy intro in the beginning of. Yeah, I mean, we're talking 30 seconds to a minute on all these intros. That's, That's just. Exactly. Kind of the biggest killer for me. Yeah, I'd say at least a quarter of the album is just skits. Yeah. Which is very, very a lot. Yeah. A lot. Granted. Nowadays, you don't really hear that many skits, mm -hmm. so they can be a little bit jarring to you now. Yeah. But even in comparison, it's still a bit too much for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's got that running bass line, doom, 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 doom. You know, so I, it, mm -hmm. that running bass line, you know, that part's good. I mean, the bass in the whole album, because you're going with that P funk kind of. Oh yeah. You know, so you get the G funk, but the bass is great. They got that, that, that synth does get a little overused, because um, that's kind of the only other thing they have besides the bass is mm -hmm. that synth, and then the rap. Um, not a terrible rap. You got the female vocals in it a little bit, but overall, it's, it's okay. Yep. And here we are. <laughs> wow, we reached the end of the album. That was a lot quicker than the last recording. Well, yeah. I know these last couple of episodes have been marathons, and now I'm like, wow, all right, we reached That's the end. Totally just flew by. Super quick. Um, yeah, so overall, I mean, look, yeah, so, the, the lyrics, the content yeah. is super raw and super personal, and he did a great job like telling stories on each album. My... Hold, hold, hold ups mm -hmm. are hold up. the skits, <laughs> the repetitiveness, kind of that. Smoke weed every day. Yeah, <laughs> the you know the the same baseline kind of running through, mm -hmm. albeit it's a great baseline. But you know, I just, I was just hoping yeah. for a little more variety and the 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 featured artists too. It was, it was just it was just a lot for me, and mm -hmm. those things kind of you know took a couple points off for me. 
Um, yeah. But there's no, absolutely no denying his st- status as yeah. a rap and hip hop icon for sure. Oh yeah, and as a as a um, you know kind of like a what the hell's the word I'm looking a for? Tostito salesman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. A pioneer. How's that? Sure, but, yeah. You know, the idea yeah. that he literally is him and Dre. Like, Dre started and then kind of he jumped in. And then that was that entire push of that G-Funk West Coast. I mean, they were they were it. And f- to come out with something like this, you know, early. Let me think about us listening to it now and we're kind of laughing and thinking, man, that's pretty crude. But now think about back in 93 when oh, this yeah. came out. Yeah. You know, this was just, this was it. Yeah, you didn't see that. this. I mean, yeah. The only other thing you can even like think of to compare it to would be like um, straight out of Compton or something. I was like just that. gonna say yeah, NWA. Yeah, yeah. Like NWA. When, yeah. when did that come out? Around the same time. I yeah. yeah, I want to say ninety two. You know, and NWA kind of had their political push. Yeah, you know, with the, the the whole fuck the police and kind of that edge of things, where this didn't have 88. that. Oh wow! Okay, so a lot there. earlier. This didn't have the same. I would say like political right. kind of uprising yeah. push. Yeah, but I mean, how many albums were talking? Like you said, half the shit was talking about balls and. And, yeah. and, and dick and, and everything <laughs> else. <and> dick. <laughs> um, w balls. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so and tedious. to still be one of the most like <laughs> iconic, uh, quintessential. <gasps> oh yeah. Woo! Ring the alarms. <laughs> early, uh, early '90s West Coast G funk, like that entire style. It was just uh, you know, it's it's definitely got its merit for yeah. that alone. It's got the the influence that yeah. especially because I. I want to say, like, I kind of skipped that middle generation because I grew up with, like, the newer artists, I would say. Mm-hmm. And I can hear a lot of that, especially in, yeah. in a lot of the newer ones. So big, big credit to Snoop for that. Mm-hmm. Um, and to still be relevant now. I mean, to oh, a yeah, yeah. You yeah. Know. Cool. All right. Yeah. Faves. Let's go with our tracks. Yeah. My favorite was uh, Who Am I? What's My Name? Agreed. Mm-hmm. One of uh, the first rap songs I got into in our middle school, like mm-hmm. I said. It's a, a great danceable beat. Got that... that P-Funk sample. Well, it's a mm-hmm. George Clinton sample. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, his most animated and kind of upbeat um, flow on pretty much every, on pretty much any track, really. Um, some flow switch-ups, which I thought was pretty good, especially for around the time. Um, fantastic track for me, definitely. I agree. It's also my favorite track. Um, it It's my first Snoop Dogg song that I was familiar with. Um and it's, I, I think, out of the whole album, the most relatable song. Like, you could just dig right in. You can connect with the song from beginning to end. Uh, yeah, absolutely, hands down, my favorite song. Yeah, I'm just, I don't know how much else to say. Same thing, first real Ooh. Snoop Dogg song I uh, was introduced to. And um, I just love that, oh, what's my motherfucking name, Snoop Dogg? Yeah. Yep. It's just a great, great, I think it might be the first time. Is, is that our first yeah. time, all agreeing on the same song? I believe so. Wow. Yeah. Might have had one more. Yeah. Let me go back to the Spotify playlist. Just a great... And and again, like we mentioned, not earlier in the album, which is surprising, and not the first single. Right. Right? Gin and Juice was the first? uh, No. What was it? Yeah. So it was the first single. My bad. Um, Yeah, you are right. Yeah. That was the first single. But still, later Later in the album, song, because of all the... The first one? The first three-way? Wow. Um. (laughs) (laughs) Uh Uh-oh. So yeah, good though. Great song. Um, now we're going to go with bottom track. Go with bottom track. Um, I mean, there was no real track that I was like, oh my God, this is terrible. Like they yeah. all were pretty, pretty standard throughout. Uh, maybe doggy dog world just kind of mm-hmm. there didn't really stick out to me. Had to re-listen to it during the podcast to kind of remember what it sounded like. So, um, if I really had to pick something that was like the killer for the whole album, was maybe the length of the skits, like yeah. the, and the number mm-hmm. of skits. Okay. Like that would be my my least is that they so, could have either shortened them or um, cut a couple of them out, not made them so prevalent throughout the album. But if we're going with a specific song, then I guess Doggy Dog World was just kind of okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I went with uh, Lodi Doty. It was a bit too long for me. The beat wasn't really um, that well produced mm-hmm. to be that long on the album. Um, I, I kind of like the lyrical content a bit more, a bit more thematic, but um, the overlapping conversation in the beginning was just kind of jarring. Yeah. It was like, what am I listening to? Kind of just made me want to skip every time I would listen to the album. So, 
But I mean, yeah, like what Mike said, it's not like a killer for the album. It's not like yeah. something I'm going to be like, oh, God, no. Yeah. Like, I'll put it on, I'll still listen to it, mm-hmm. but it's not something I would, like, seek out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, my least favorite, as you can probably guess, was For All My Blanks and Bitches. <laughs> um, I, <clears throat> yeah. I, I can't stand that song now that this episode has been recorded, and if I go back to this album, I will... Hit skip. I I just think it's annoying. It's too long. They're saying the same. The the choruses themselves are also long themselves. Yeah. So it's it, it's a no for me, dog. I, I'm not <laughs> dog? a fan of this one. <laughs> dog. That's so smart. Um, Dark Horse Sleeper. Mine is G's and Hustlers. Oh, I love nice. this song. Coming in second to last track. You might not get to it. Mm-hmm. You got to listen to this song because I love that intro. That's yeah. kind of schoolhouse intro. Mm-hmm. Love the bass line. Love that all the instruments are like synced in. Love his rap. Great song. Jeez and Hesselus. That was yeah. a good song. Um, I got to go with the Shiznit. Yeah. I definitely. just really liked it. The, the flute killed it for like, yeah, it. Was just the flute, great. Yeah. When mm-hmm. the flute came in, I was like, what is that? The <laughs> flute on, the, on a rap song? Like gangster rap song? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I don't know. It was just, I thought it was such a change up from the whole. There is not another song in the album that sounds like the Shiznit. Yeah. And that's what really, like, it was that different you would not expect. Well, and it's early it. on, too. It's only yeah. technically four or five songs in, depending on which mm-hmm. track you list at? you look at. Um, but it was early on. Is even before, like I said, we said, Who Am I? Um, it's right after Gin and Juice. It just, that was my, it was just such a cool, different song. Yeah, yep, for sure. Um, I'm going to pull a bit of Joe Sod and pick two. Oh! Sorry. Oh. I know, you, right? So it, I must, it must be the wine speaking. It is. <laughs> I'm, I'm already wine drunk. Um, I originally just had one, and that one was Murder Was the Case. Okay. Mm-hmm. I really enjoyed that one. The uh, the darker themes kind of showing the other side of fame a bit. Um, the uh, intricate... And, uh, it's, it's good. Yeah, it's good. It's I talked cool. about it already. It's good. I don't want to repeat yeah. myself. But my other one that I was going to add is uh, Ain't No Fun. Yes. You know, it's got that, that, that funky bass, mm-hmm. the, the sex talk all over it. It's really nice. Uh, really smooth R&B track. The features yeah, nice. kill it. It's, it's good. It's good. Listen to it. It's good. It is. So I love the fact that we all agreed for the first time on our favorite yeah. track. And we but all, I, we all gave, gave separate, yeah. separate uh, dark horses. <laughs> I, that's, that's what it's all about. I love that. Love yep. that. Cool. All right. Let's, um, let's rate it here. 3.5. Um, I'm giving it, you know, again, it's not like a go-to rap album for me, but because of the major influence it had, it's almost like a thriller idea. It Mm -hmm. had such a major influence, even though it wasn't maybe the best album ever. And it was so early on, you know, what he did early on with this style of rap, you know, paved the way for so much, so much else to happen Mm -hmm. in the future. Um, so I gave it a 3.5, you know, it's, it's a good album. I'd listen to it again. I've listened to it a couple of times. Um, just for this podcast, and um, yeah, I really I did enjoy it. I'm gonna one up you and give it a four. Whoa, wow. that's right. Yeah, originally, originally I was thinking around a three to a three and a half. Yeah, but I feel like with more and more listens, the the catchiness mm-hmm. and the, the qualities that Snoop kind of brings to the table uh, really resonated with me. Um, the most of the features are really really solid. Uh, the production from Dr. Dre is really good for the time. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Fits under an hour, so it's not too long. Um, it's th- there's a bit more skits than I like, which kind of limits it from being like really, really, really good for me. Um, the lyrics can be a bit repetitive, um, but I feel like the charm of the album kind of saves it a, a bit more. But uh, definitely all time classic hip hop album. This is, this one's going in uh, the Hall of Fame. Oh yeah, for going sure. to Canton yep. or whatever it is. <laughs> Um, I, I'm, I'm giving it a three. Um, right. There's no denying the, the power of it. Like Tom just said, the, you know, it's, it's going into the, the Hall of Fame. Um, but just the number of featured artists, the number of intros, the length of the intros, the lack of flow at times just kind of ruined it for me. There's some great songs on it, awesome songs, which are in my uh, playlist that I make. Mm-hmm. Um, but just as an album experience overall, it can get a little choppy. But I love his perspective on life and West Coast living at that time and being a young up-and-coming rapper. Um, that is worthwhile. So three, three for me. Nice. Yep. So now let's talk about the wine. The wine. Our first wine. Our first. 19 Crimes wine. Cali Red. 
I'm not a wine person, which none of us are. Yeah, definitely not. Um, and I can drink. You know, I, I'm not gonna say I won't drink wine. It's just I'm not a wine person. I'm mm-hmm. not really a big fan. I won't drink a lot of it. I thought this went down pretty smooth. I thought it tasted good. I mean, I thought you know, I got a little bit in a second glass, and I'm not dying. Like I, it's, I give it a three. Okay. Two and a half, three. Wow. Because I don't drink wine, so I don't really have a ton of comparison, to be completely honest. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But for $12, if That's... someone says, hey, you got to buy a wine, this is 12 bucks, and I could sit here and sip on this for an evening, and, and it wouldn't be a bad thing. You know, um, some of them just have a little, they're a little too sweet, or they're a little too whatever the case is, and this one's just goes down smooth, in my opinion. It's mm-hmm. not bad at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel like a lot of the negative ratings that we're giving it is simply because we're not big wine. wine yes, yeah. right. So, yeah. so, but I'm in that same boat, like around two, two and, and a half three. ish. Yeah. yeah, it's it's for for the price, pretty cheap. Yeah. Um, for the setting as of right now, like one p.m. on a Sunday, not gonna go seek wine usually. No, no. Um, but yeah, again, it's it's more of a setting thing for me, you know. Yeah. If you're in that right mood to go out and drink some wine, then this is a, a good one. You get a decent bang for your buck. Yeah. Higher alcohol content. Yeah, but mm-hmm. I'm yeah, it's not a big wine person. I didn't even finish the first glass, so Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I too am not a big wine person. I hate wine. I've been on so many wine tastings and vineyard visits and all that. Like the vibe is cool, but I just don't I don't buy my own wine tasting because I know I'm not gonna like it. So like everyone said, don't listen to our specific ratings. However, I liked this. I yeah. I got through my first glass. I was pleasantly surprised. Yep. Um, I just poured you a little bit more. You did, just and I guess I'm going to have to finish that. <laughs> um, but I always try and look at the big picture, and 19 Crimes, you know, their, their brand, Real their cool theme, concept. cool concept of the wine. Absolutely. That definitely if, helped. You know, if you're into... Big picture, you know, you read up on it, and it's really cool. The whole um, augmented reality thing with him talking mm-hmm. through the app, that's awesome. The price is great. The quality is great. But I'm giving it a 2.5, yeah. again, because I'm not a big wine guy. But it is really good. I'll remind you, Amanda gave it 4.5, which yeah. that's – she's a big wine fan. So she rates this 4.5. That, that's big. So Definitely go check this out and check out all their other wines, 19 Crimes, because they're very popular. Mm -hmm. A lot of people drink this brand. Yeah, I, again, knew nothing about them until we found this and we decided to do a little research and Mm -hmm. try it. And I don't really have much wine to compare it to, but it's definitely for the price and everything else. I would, I'd buy this again. Yeah, Hmm. yeah, for sure. Yeah. Cool, very nice. All right, well, that brings us to the end of another episode let's let's shout everyone out here yeah just 19 crimes on instagram go yep. uh, give them a follow and their website ha- is so extensive mike was looking yes. at it oh, during yeah, the cool. episode um and then of course snoop dog just snoop dog on instagram two g's s n double o p d o double g uh oh yeah check him out i mean his career speaks for itself <laughs> yeah you know, itself awesome uh so next episode i think we're getting back on track with uh the producer pick. That's it's right. It's been a very long time. That's right. It's time for another producer pick. That's what do you right. got for us, Tom? Uh, I am picking for our album. It is going to be Goodbye Yellow Brick Road by Elton John. Oh, Just wow. a classic, uh, classic, uh, classic rock. That's more. It's more of like a, a ballad heavy. There yeah. are some rock songs okay. on it. Okay, it's okay, good. okay. And the beer is going to be a bit of a surprise. Ooh. So I'm, uh, I'm, 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 I'm reserving that. A little so. cliffhanger? A, a first bit? one? Uh-oh. Yeah, you're, you're going to find out soon enough. <sighs> wow, I like it. And not because I didn't choose it yet, but because <laughs> I have it, and it's I'm just, you know, the, the so, suspension. We got we to gotta keep the listeners on the edge of their seats. That's you know? right. They're going to have to listen and watch out. You're going to have to see our sneak peek on, uh, on our Instagram yes. to see what it is yes. in a couple it. days. So speaking of that Instagram, please follow us. You know, we, we try and do a lot of fun stuff on social media. Uh, Hops and Bops podcast, all one word, on Instagram and Facebook. We're streaming on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube. Also, by the way... We have a lot of episodes by now. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, Tom has actually compiled all of our individual favorite tracks from all the albums we've talked about into one playlist. That playlist, if you're interested in, is accessible through the link in our bio. Uh, leads you right to Spotify. It's, they're all there. It's a good mix of everything. Yep. Um, a lot of different genres, so be sure to check that out for sure. Um, so... 
For Mike and Tom, I've been Joe. We'll see you next time. Peace.